Uh, this is Journey Mike Rebel coming to you from Chicago as usual. And today I've got a fun one. It's an old one sent to me by a viewer. Thank you very much. It's uh, from Free Keen. Uh, I've done a couple of videos involving them before, and it's always a good time. This one's interesting. It's a whole trial, small issue, but it's a whole trial in a short period of time. It's a sovereign citizen just trying to get out of a driving without registration ticket. Let's do it. All right, Mr. Perry, uh, will you stand, please, sir? You ready for trial? Yes. I have a complaint run by the New Hampshire State Police. It's a motor vehicle violation from the 16th of May, 2012. Uh, the charge is that on uh, South Main Street in Newport, uh, you did fail and neglect to have a vehicle a registered that you were operating in accordance with RSA 261. And you wear the charge. Yes. And you filed uh, two motions to dismiss? Uh, one to dismiss and one for an exemption from the supposed requirement to register a personal vehicle. And so I'll consider those motions uh, in the context of the evidence presented in Rule 11 uh, after the trial. Okay, so th this is interesting in case you didn't hear it because the volume is tough. I did the best I could with it. But he's charged with operating vehicle without registration, I believe in New Hampshire. And he files two motions. Uh, one is to dismiss and, and the other motion is he files for an exemption from the uh, need to to register his vehicle. Yes, yeah, sir. If you raise your right hand, please just write some truth, the whole truth, and not be the truth. So, I do. Maybe see. Just keep your voice up nice and loud so that everything you say is heard by a close of us present and then recorded. Go right ahead. Uh, yes, Your Honor. I'm uh, May uh, 16, uh, 2012, approximately 4 40 uh, p.m. I want you to identify yourself for the record, please. Hi, yes, Your Honor. I'm Trooper Jason Eckhart from the Amsterdam State Police. Um, I've been employed by the uh, Department of Safety since uh, 2004. I'm currently assigned to Troop G, which is a much more vehicle uh, unit, and the DMV investigative unit. Okay, this is just weird. Uh, the judge is asking the questions. He does ask this, the state if they're ready, so I'm assuming there's an attorney, though I never see one, sitting over, there's some sort of prosecutor in the room. Yet the judge is asking the questions. That's not normal, although this is an administrative procedure, maybe. I, I don't know. I don't know. Actually, I shouldn't say that. I don't know how they charge it. It's a minor uh, thing, so they might be just a little lax with uh, with the procedure. Uh, the, the witness sits down and just starts telling his story, doesn't even establish who he is, and then the judge backs him up and says, hey, can you can you say, explain what your job is and all that? Generally speaking, you'd have an attorney, namely a prosecutor, uh, call the witness, have them sworn in, uh, start with their name and their position and their connection with the case, lay a foundation <laughs> for, for the coming testimony, but, but we're just kind of plowing ahead here. Uh, on uh, May 16th, approximately 4.40 uh, p.m., I was uh, traveling uh, north on South Main Street. The court could take judicial notice that uh, South Main Street in Newport is in way. I'll do that. Uh, I pulled up behind a vehicle at the intersection of 11103 and South Main Street in the uh, left-hand turn lane, and I noticed a plate on it that was uh, unusual to me in that it had a, a big star on the side of it. Uh, loosely identified it with the state of Texas uh, plate. It looked unusual because I, I just don't see a lot of those. So I, uh, I went ahead and ran the plate to find out if it was in fact a valid plate. Um, when I talked to the dispatcher uh, and read the plate uh, numbers and letters back to uh, her, uh, she identified that uh, plate as being uh, no longer registered uh, because it had expired uh, too, uh, too much prior. Um, it was a plate issue or what state's name? Uh, Texas. Texas. Texas license plate. Yes, sir. Um, the uh, so what I did is uh, I followed that vehicle, turned on the emergency lights, uh, followed the vehicle around uh, onto 11103 from South Main Street. The vehicle then uh, turned right into the Irving uh, gas station, if you're familiar, and pulled into the pump area. Uh, I got out of the cruiser. I approached the vehicle. I uh, told the uh, driver that the vehicle uh, license plate registration was in fact. Uh, expired and 
ask the uh, driver for his identification and any registration paper he may have. At that time, uh, the driver uh, presented me with an Arizona uh, driver's license and some paperwork uh, for registration <coughs> in the state of Texas. Um, took that paper. Again, this is bizarre to me. There are no pending questions, and and to the extent there ever was a question, it was from the judge. That is not the normal procedure. I get it. It's just because this is a small fine ticket, and and they're they're, they're just kind of moving along. But I, I I haven't ever really been in a hearing like this before. Work uh, back to the cruiser. Uh, informed them who I was, who I worked for, that someone. Uh, went back to the cruiser. Uh, Double checked that the plate was in fact. Uh, no longer registered uh, with a dispatcher and uh, created a summons uh, for uh, failure to register the vehicle. Went back up to the uh, uh, driver, uh, identified as the defendant, uh, Mr. Gerald Perry, uh, and told him uh, that it was issuing a summons. And I went through my normal uh, spiel basically for when I issued a summons. The court of jurisdiction is uh, Newport District Court, and I explained it was right down the street from where we were. He was unfamiliar because he had an Arizona uh, driver's license. I uh, explained that he had uh, a few choices to make. Be guilty, not guilty, or no contender, but he needed to answer the summons within 30 days. Uh, Mr. Uh, Perry uh, answered that he did, uh, understood, uh, but he asked that he had a jury trial. I said, uh, I told Mr. Perry that uh, I had no uh, way of making that decision. The only person that could make that decision is the court. And uh, from then on, I, I departed and uh, continued on with my day. Um, from there on, uh, that was the end of my interaction with Mr. Perry. And you see the gentleman today that uh, was driving the vehicle? I do. It was Mr. Perry. You see it at the defendant's stable. You may cross examine uh, Trooper Hickox. Do you have any questions? So you go right ahead. Yes. Uh, you testified that you saw me traveling north on South Main. Yes. Uh, how far did you actually witness me travel? Uh, on South Main Street? Uh, during the total duration, uh, your officer notes don't uh, note a distance. Yes. Uh, I, how, how far? The total distance. Uh, well, it'd probably be about uh, 300, maybe 300 yards total. Okay. And that's livable. I mean, from the time that I was behind you, I noticed that the plate was expired until the time that you pulled into Irving. That's the, that's uh, the I, I just noticed that it's, the officer notes do say market distance, which was not done. Uh, was I violating the posted speed limit? No. Was I traveling in an unsafe manner? No. Uh, while operating the vehicle, was I being potentially hazardous to other drivers? No. And you testified that I was not speeding, being unsafe, or otherwise being dangerous, correct? That's correct. Are you familiar with Article 19 of the New Hampshire Constitution, which you swore to uphold? Generally, yes. Okay, Article 19 reads in part, every subject has a right to be secure from all unreasonable searches and seizures of his person, his house, his papers, and his possessions. You will agree that a vehicle is a possession? Yes. How then was running a check of the license plate not an unreasonable search? It's not unreasonable because in the state of New Hampshire, we can run any vehicle that's operating on the ways of the state of New Hampshire. So there's total discretion of, oh, I see a license plate, I just want to run it for absolutely no reason. Yes. Uh, you know, I don't know. I really don't do this, but I believe I've seen that before, that the officers can just run any plate. That would make sense. I don't think they need probable cause or reasonable suspicion or anything to just to just run a plate when they're out on patrol. Um, that is certainly the officer's position, and he's very upfront about it. He, he doesn't say that he has any other reason other than it was not a state plate, and he thought it looked strange, so he ran it. That's it. He, he doesn't duck it. That, that's all he says. Uh, would you say that you had probable cause? Run my plate? Probable cause to run the license plate? Yes. The fact that Whereas you, you believed that I was committing some kind of a crime or had committed a crime? The reason why I, I uh, ran the license plate because the, the plate was definitely unusual um, in that it was a, it's not a normal Texas license plate. I think we can both agree with that. Texas has like 75 different plates that they allow people to get. Okay.
Okay, all this is just like a real amateur deal, which is fine. Again, it's a it's a lax hearing, but uh, you know he doesn't get the answer to the one question that he asks that he wants, which is, do you think you have probable cause? The officer really doesn't have probable cause. He just has discretion to run it when he wants to, but he doesn't even pin the officer in because because he doesn't know what he's doing. And and now he starts having a conversation with them. He's not asking questions. He's responding to them. None of it makes sense. If there's a prosecutor in the room, they could be objecting to all this, but they're not going to because they can see he's not going anywhere. Do you run every out state license plate that you see? No. So you, again, you admit that you use discretion on how to enforce RSA 26140? I use discretion based on what I saw. Do you always ticket people for expired registration or do you sometimes issue warnings? I do sometimes issue warnings. And how do you decide whether to issue a warning or a ticket? Um, generally speaking, if it's really close to the uh, registration time, I may ask them, I'll issue a summons and say you need to have the vehicle registered. If you provide proof, then I'll, I'll dismiss the ticket or replace it on file. Or and what, if anything, influenced your decision to give me specifically a ticket instead of a warning? Uh, the reason why I issued a summons is that your vehicle had been expired for a period of time that was longer. And it was, a, it was unreasonable if you were traveling through for you to come back and provide proof. He's a good witness. He's he's actually, I, I mean, it's a, it's a little ticket, but uh, he's crushing the defendant who's representing himself, and the defendant doesn't realize it. Uh, he, he just gives good rationale for it. Not that he needs to over-rationalize it, but he he gives a really good reason when he asks. Well, you're you're from out of state. It, would, it isn't reasonable for you to, to come back and show me the proof. It had been expired for a long time. Did you notice anything unusual about my feet? No. Bumper stickers. Oh, actually, I did notice that there were bumper stickers on it. Do you recall specifically what any of those bumper stickers said? No. Okay. I believe the officer does not recall what the bumper sticker says. They never say here. Also, just implicit in the question is I had uh, bumper stickers that said dopey things on the back of my, my vehicle. And of, and of course, that's going to draw more attention to you. That's just human nature. That, that That's part of it. Uh, did the bumper stickers on my vehicle influence your decision to give me a ticket instead of a warning? No. And what facts, if any, do you have to prove that I am subject to RSA 26140? You're traveling on the ways of the state of New Hampshire. Okay. Uh, <laughs> more, more specifically, uh, what facts do you have to prove that I have agreed to abide by the statutes of the government of New Hampshire? You drive in the state of New Hampshire. Great answer. You just said you, you're driving on the roads. <laughs> that's it. What facts do you have? You're, you're operating a vehicle on the road, and that's that, that's all we need. Okay. You're familiar with Article 3 of the New Hampshire Constitution? Generally speaking, if you can refresh it, I can uh, it, uh, I don't have it written down, but it roughly states that people supposedly give up rights for the greater good in return for a government issuing protection. The Supreme Court of the United States has ruled that governments are not duty bound to protect individuals, that police are there to enforce laws. And Article 3 also says without this protection, the surrender of rights is void. So based on that, since there is no duty for the government to protect me, and Article 3 specifies that without that protection, the surrender of rights is void. What facts do you have to prove that I am subject to the laws of New Hampshire? You are operating a vehicle in the state of New Hampshire. Okay. Great answer. You are operating a vehicle in the state of New Hampshire. Uh, all that, by the way, was was inappropriate. It, the, the pro se's uh, rarely understand the distinction between making a legal argument and questioning a witness. And here's a prime example. Uh, do you know my question of the answer? <laughs> so, yeah, the, so, one second. The, uh, 
the witnesses on the stand sworn to answer uh, yes sir answer questions and you may cross examine uh, if mr perry takes a stand you may have an opportunity to cross examine and ask him questions but not this time you might call you may continue the, the government of New Hampshire is not duty bound under federal court ruling to give me protection. And I don't believe that my rights are being protected. Specifically the Article 2, Article 4, Article 10, and Article 19 rights. Article 10 specifies, I have that written down here, government being instituted for the common benefit, protection, and security of the whole, and not for the private interest or emolument of any one man, family, or class of men. Therefore, whenever the government are perverted and public liberty manifestly endangered, and all other means of redress are ineffectual, the people may, and of right, ought to reform the old, or establish a new government. Uh, dude, get a registration. <laughs> He's talking about overthrowing the government here. Uh, he's referring to to laws saying if the, if the government has become so oppressive. Well, uh, you haven't established that, okay? They they just they just have the same rules about registration every other state in the country does. <laughs> the doctrine of non-resistance against arbitrary power and oppression is absurd, slavish, and destructive of the good and happiness of mankind. So I believe that it is my right to attempt to bring about governmental reform. I never agreed nor signed papers stating that I pledged allegiance to any government. And in fact, I am a member of the Shire Society. Are you familiar with the Shire Society? I've heard of it. Okay. And I, I don't know what society he's referring to and the, the volume on this is so bad. Uh, if, if you know, please put it in the comment section below for me. And part the fourth, of the Shire Society Declaration Shire states Society. explicit voluntary association is the only means by which binding obligations may be created and claims based on association or relationships to which any party did not consent are empty and invalid. I have never consented to any currently recognized government. Oh, this is new on me. He's, he's now citing rules of the Shire Society. <laughs> In court, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't matter what your what your little club says. Uh, it's not the law. So it is my position that RSA two sixty one forty is invalid, and the entire vehicle registration code is invalid because you are aware that there ex are exemptions for certain individuals. Exemptions for what? from the fees associated with vehicle registration in the state of New Hampshire. Are you aware of that? That, that a person can be completely exempt from the registration of the vehicle? Are you aware of that? That's the question. Uh, I'm not aware of that. You are aware that certain individuals are exempt from the fees associated with registration, correct? Asked and answered, but okay. I'm not aware of that. Okay. Uh, the RSA does actually specify individuals and groups who are exempt, those being disabled veterans, prisoners of war, blind veterans, as well as certain vehicles owned by nonprofits. All okay, again, we've just jumped back into argument. Uh, you, you know, again, you'll see this with pro se's. Judges will let them go because it's just faster than trying to explain it to them. But uh, if, if I did this in front of a judge, they would be all over me. Uh, you know, saying, counsel, you know better. What are you doing? All motor vehicles owned and driven by the state, county, city, town, or school district, any motor vehicle owned or driven by a volunteer fire department, and any motor vehicle owned and driven by a public or private educational institution for the purpose of driver's training. And I just have two final questions. What proof, if any, do you have to support the claim that I violated RSA 26140. You are operating a vehicle in the state of New Hampshire. Well, what physical Excuse evidence? Me. Excuse me one second. Uh, let him, uh, you can answer the question. You gotta let, okay. let him answer the question you asked. Any person that operates a vehicle in the state of New Hampshire is required to have that <coughs> vehicle uh, registered. 
whether it be through your own jurisdiction or ours. But what physical evidence do you have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that I am guilty of violating RSA 26140? The, the fact that I ran your registration and no valid registration exists, that it was expired, that is the evidence. But what physical evidence do you have to present today in court? I don't have any physical evidence. I think what his thought process is, is the same like, you know, where's the victim? They presume a, a, a condition that doesn't exist. You don't have any physical evidence. He observed a vehicle. He ran the registration. The registration wasn't uh, current. He asked him for the registration. He couldn't produce it. He wrote him the ticket. There's no physical evidence of it. The, the, the evidence was his testimony and, and the fact that he didn't produce it. The end. Thank you. No further questions. Uh, you signed the uh, hearing on May 16th of this year. I did, Your Honor. And you said he, was, he stopped and he presented you with an Arizona driver's license. Yes, sir. And he presented you with uh, some form of a hard copy of a registration. That's correct. Issued by? Texas. And uh, did it reflect the, uh, when it was effective and when it was to expire? Yes, sir. Do you recall? Uh, I believe it was March, but I can't remember the exact date of it. March of this year is, is was what? The expiration date. So, so he had the vehicle registered at some point. I mean, unless he bought it that way or whatever, and it's expired. Uh, so the, 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 these are newfound beliefs that, that he's exempt from uh, registering his vehicle. Any other questions regarding that? No, no, no other questions. No other questions. We step down. Thanks very much. Any other witnesses uh, uh, from the state's perspective? No, no, state rest. State rest. All right, you see it. See right there, I hear, I hear a voice that would be uh, that should be a prosecutor, and he says no. I'm sure the prosecutor knows the way the judge handles these things, um, but you know he, he and he rested the case, so th there is an attorney there. I don't know why he wasn't doing the questioning. That's very odd to me. Perry, you may take a stand if you wish. You may call up yourself to testify. You have the right to remain silent. If you I have no witnesses. Do you wish to testify? No. Sir. Oh, the tension is mounting. RSA uh, 26140 is the uh, provision of the Motor Vehicle Code. Uh, the defendant has been charged with violating uh, that statute. It says that it is a violation for any person to drive a, any vehicle, which is not specifically exempt by statute or rule from the requirement of registration unless the same has been registered and the appropriate fee paid in accordance with the provisions of this chapter. The only evidence presented to this court is that Mr. Perry was operating a motor vehicle on a public way in the state of New Hampshire and that the vehicle was not registered. No other evidence has been presented to this court. And so a, year, a motion to dismiss has been denied uh, and the motion uh, to receive an exemption from the requirement to register a personal automobile is also denied based upon a lack of any evidence to support either a motion and the charge of uh, failing and neglecting to have the vehicle that you were operating registered in accordance with law contrary to RSA 261-40. Uh, I do find you guilty of uh, violating that charge. The statute says the fine for a violation of this section shall be $100. So I've, I've imposed a fine of $100, a penalty assessment by statute associated with all fines is 24%. So I've added a $24 penalty assessment to the fine, uh, the total uh, fine penalty assessment, that's $124 after finding him guilty. I would ask you, Mr. Perry, to please stop at the window in the lobby of the clerk's office uh, before you exit the courthouse so that you can address uh, the question of payment of the fine. Uh, I, would, I would like to motion the court to allow me to donate this money to a charity. <laughs> oh, so he's found guilty. The, the, the judge uh, gives him a, a whopping $100 fine. Apparently that's what, what it is. And there's a, some $24 penalty on top of it. So he's got a whole $124. And then, and then he moves the court to, to whether or not he can pay it to charity. No, that, that's not how it works.
You're assessed a fine, you pay it to the court. The uh, fine uh, and the penalty assessment uh, is uh, due to the court, and uh, you must pay the court for the fine. It's not permitted to, to, to allow to uh, pay anyone else. Uh, I, I would like to motion the court to allow me to do community service and move the fine. You certainly can file such a motion, and I'll, I'll be happy to consider that. Uh, you'll have to uh, file a written request with the clerk to do community service and a financial affidavit signed under oath. Uh, I have to make a finding that you are indigent and not able to pay the fine before I can permit you to do community service. But you truly have no ability to pay the fine. Um, you may discharge the fine by doing community service and receive credit at the rate of $10 an hour. So you'd be required to do that. Ouch. So he, he just doesn't want to pay the court, which I get. He's, he's, he's upset. He thinks he can drive without registration. But that, that was funny. You know, he says, fine, I'll, I'll listen to that. But first, you got to show that you're indigent, which wouldn't shock me if he's wasting this kind of time in, on this sort of argument. And then, but then he says, you can work it off with community service at $10 an hour. Now, I know this is an old video, but that, I mean, you, you, you really? Uh, $124? Uh, you you want to spend uh, 13 hours of your life? Uh, working to be all right out of hours of community service to match the 124 hours to do the clerk of war all that would get the window okay thanks very much thank you all right please Well, there you have it. Uh, it was a strange hearing. I'm sorry the volume wasn't better, but uh, our sub sit fails as usual. Um, you know, he's driving, his registration's expired. He gets pulled over for registration. The best argument he started to make was that you don't, you didn't have probable cause to, to pull me over. And I think he's correct. However, I don't think it's required. I, I, I don't think he needs probable cause to run the plate. Once he, once he runs the plate and sees that, sees that the registration's expired, I think he can pull him over. I'm not a police officer, and I don't deal with things like this. But uh, if if that's not the case in New Hampshire, he should have put, he put a, put his efforts into that. Um, the, his other argument, where he goes full soft sit, is where he says he's part of the Shire Society, apparently, and uh, they have a club rule that that uh, none of them uh, ha have consented to <laughs> to abide by the law. Uh, okay, here a lot of talk. We like to have fun with uh, silly stuff that happens in court, and every once in a while, and completely by accident, I assure you, you might learn something. Thanks for watching.